so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. Like you talk shop with them and and see how it goes and. You know, that's the biggest thing um, that I've seen on it is like, you know, you, they know what's going on. They don't, you're not having to hold their hand throughout the whole process. They know exactly what's going on, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so, but yeah, I mean, that's the two types that I'm doing. I mean, it, it's not too, nothing crazy, but weekly distressed and then a larger list. I just like to go niche in general just to kind of keep two yeah. different, um, you know, things there. So. And one thing that I, I've i been on even newer people is mainly about consistency. Just because you buy a list and you don't get any hits, you just have to be consistent, you know? And you do. Yeah, and especially with the follow-ups because, you know, it'll only be like a 5 to 10% chance that I'll get something off of a list, I'll get a hot lead, and they're like, yeah, I want to sell, and... I'm going to give it to you exactly what you want today, you know, today. <laughs> yeah. So 90% of the time, 90 to 95% of the time, it's not until I follow up with them the fifth, the 10th time. The 12th so our, time. our average, um, point of contact. So if, if as far as just you and I, yeah. text, and not just a text, but a texting conversation in itself. Yeah. But, um, the the average point of contact we have with a closed deal, not a contract, like a closed deal, is seventeen. Wow. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, you're right. There's some that are like, I mean, I've had them where we went over and signed the contract the next day. You're like, holy yeah. crap! But um, you get, but again, it's consistency because yeah. you will get those if you're consistent. Most times, it takes, um, you know, say you pull a list today, and this is another thing I learned in a. In a some good education I got last year, but um, it, it's return. What is it? It's it's, it's your uh, your your cash return cycle, basically. So the type of okay. time you put money into uh, marketing and the time you get all of that money back on cold uh -huh. calling. You know, between the point in time where I spend uh, you know five hundred bucks on a list and, and and skip tracing it, and then paying a cold caller, and I'm a couple grand in, or say I'm you know. Two, two grand in for three months I'm six grand in um, it's going to take three to five months to get the return on that not to say that you won't get one in the first couple of weeks but if yeah. you average that out consistently for 12 months and you look from the point in time you pulled that list to the time you got the deal done it's usually about three to five months I mean because okay. you're going to pull that list for say a month whatever maybe a month yeah. two goes by get the deal another 30 days goes by that's three months right or you yeah. get somebody who is ready to go or but they just can't make the decision yet because they're waiting on somebody or something legitimately that they can't yet close so that's another 30 days so it's 30 it, it's usually about 90 to 120 days is uh right. your return on that cash conversion cycle is what it is is what's right here conversion cycle so, so patience and consistency it sucks like being patient yeah and see in the same sentence it's kind of weird but um like if you learn that and you just know and it's tough, but, um, I mean, I, I, it's funny being how much more comfortable I am knowing that I'm going to get a deal or two yeah. in a couple of weeks or whatever versus, you know, the first six months, like crap. I mean, <laughs> am I going to eat? <laughs> yeah. I mean, really it's going to be a math equation. The more people you talk to, the better chance you have of getting a deal, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, as long as you keep on your follow-ups and, and and keep with those, I mean, they they will come, and you know, it it, it will happen. So, um, but that's one thing I've learned about is just developing a system. So, um, you know, for beginners out there, they're hand dialing their spreadsheets, they're doing all this and things like that. And it's great to start off with. 
Um, but you at least want to think about even just drawing it out like a flow chart of how you how you want like okay you cold call the lead comes in where do you want it to go how do you want to follow up and what do you want to say things like that you know and you you don't have to have all the systems you can just okay this is my plan for when i can afford it when i do my first couple of deals and i can put money into it you know? Yeah, I would say so. Like, if I could put some input on top of that to actually get yeah. somebody a, a, a something like trackable and measurable, um, our our average. So to give you some numbers, as far as getting a contract, um, it takes us uh, about twenty. Is it twenty seven to thirty um, warm leads? People who said yes to mm-hmm. get a contract. Got it, it. So if you think about, you know. You talk to, I forget, I think our, our average like uh, person we talk to to person who raises their hand is like one in like, I think, 70, something like that, right? Okay. So that's actually not bad. Number, so like one in 70 to get a warm lead and then you get 27 to uh, 30 warm leads to get a deal. And so you ask yourself if you want a deal a month. Um, I think if you're just starting off instead of 27 to 30, you're probably looking at closer to like. 50. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you think about how many conversations it takes to get 50 yeses or 50, you know, interested people, you probably are going to have to pull a list of 5,000 people or something and just hammer that thing every single day. And so like if you're to call and say you're calling, you know, um, say you're you're calling, you're dialing um, 500 dials a day which if you have a dialer that's i mean it sounds like a lot but an auto dialer as you know is going to knock out yeah 100 and like you know um six hours and that's just six hours of sitting on a dialer right six yeah. hours so say you're doing you know 500 dials and i said it takes you know say it takes 75 um to get you know that's six so that's six people out of that you know and you're doing that every day you got to think about the numbers where maybe that you make sense so you can get a deal. So right. it takes a lot of people to talk to to get a, a yes, and it takes a lot of yeses to get an actual deal. So I would think of it in that process and how much time you can sit yeah. there once you know how many people it takes to talk to to get to talk to and take two yes. And this right here, and this right here, I just kind of want to bring up is exactly why wholesalers are important. Okay. Do you think a fix and flipper is going to do all that work? Just to find their deals? Week. Yeah, right. They don't have Yeah. It. They're like, no, I want to get my next flip. I want to get that in there. I want to turn that money as much as possible. And I want to work on the next flip. So, yeah, you know, 100%. you know, that's the reason why we are wholesalers. That's the reason why we, you know, there are wholesalers. And that's the reason why fix and flippers should love us. Most do. Some want to counter money unfortunately so <laughs> you know um usually those that want to count our money i usually don't sell it on anymore so this deal is on the mls for them <laughs> exactly exactly yeah so um now you also do fix and flips and buy and holds as well right um i don't hold anything right now i kind okay. of have a different goal in mind for that um sure only rental I have is my old house. So I moved down to Detroit here in downtown and decided to rent. Um, I like the idea of just renting and not having any maintenance for the home. But anyways, um, no rental is just my old first home that I have. That, that fortunately, cash flow flows pretty well, but I bought it when my mortgage was 3%. So, um, yeah. but right now, yeah, it's all, um, I'm an agent. So I do um, a few listings. It, it's probably 80% wholesale. You know, 10% flip, 10% list. So right. I do, my goal is to do, and I just started doing this. I did my first flip last year, but my goal is to do, you know, a flip a quarter this year just because it will supplement the wholesaling. Um, yep. You know, if I can do a flip a quarter, wholesale, you know, three deals a month, four mm-hmm. deals a month, um, you know, that's just kind of, it, it fits my goals, fits my capacity uh, as I'm just myself and a couple of uh, VAs. So, um, yeah. It's something I can get a good wide base on, and then maybe next year scale that. Instead of doing four, we do you know six or eight, and then you know five wholesale deals a month or something. But um, that's what I've been doing this year so far. So that's awesome. 
Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's a really good thing to know where you need to go and what you need to do. And hey, I have goals that I want to do one flip a quarter. You know, I want to do three to four deals a month, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, what do you find that is so I mean, you talk to a lot of people as far as people in the real estate game and new wholesalers and things like that a lot. Um, what do you, what is the most common question you get from a new wholesaler? How do I know what a deal is? How do you know what a deal is? Okay. I and just feel like that's either the common question I get or they say they have a deal and I look at it and it's not a deal. So, yeah. um, you know, no offense. That's what I did first too. But I think, you know, biggest thing as far as a deal goes like i would say i don't I mean like i guess if you're like brand new 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 yeah new, new, um there's three things to get to know what a deal is or three components to learn to understand what a deal is as is value what the cost of repairs are mm-hmm. and then after repair value and it sounds super silly like okay yeah i know that's what i'm trying to do figure out the cash offer price right. um I honest to God, I I love wholesaling. I really do. But I think lately it's been misguided and um, probably um, overlooked as far as wholesaling goes. I mean, it's a great way to get in with no skin in the game. Um, You know, try to, you know, it's the lowest barrier to entry. But I would say you have to take an avenue to probably put a little more skin in the game. And I'm not saying you have to have a big bank account, go out and buy houses. But I would do one of two things. Either become an agent. Mm-hmm. So you can get access to MLS and understand the actual components to real estate and, um, you know, learn to know what you're looking at, running comps, pulling values, understanding what's what, or um, try to learn the lens of an actual investor. Um, wholesalers, we're not investors, we're marketers. That's that's all we yep. do is market. Um, but learn what it's like to be an investor. What I mean is go to your meetup and, le- and, and, and meet your private money lenders and the reason I say that is like, check this out. So, I mean, it sounds simple, but it's overlooked. But if you if you go get some relationships with private money lenders, um, there are people that you can ask, you know, what the criteria is um, mm-hmm. to lend on a property. And they're going to tell you, and that's kind of the criteria things it needs for a property to be a deal. So you're going to learn from them. Obviously, you want to reach out to buyers in the area, start asking them. I mean, I, I would say to be, mm-hmm. you know, Drop, drop your ego and have some humility and just ask around like buyers, you know, people you can trust and know. But um, anyways, going back to the lender, if you make some relationships with private money or hard money lenders, and obviously if um, if they lend on it and they're going to be able to lend on the property, you bring them a property that's a deal and they're able to lend on it. Think about it. It's a deal. Like they have most, you know, unless they're a new lender and their criteria is not good. But I mean, if you bring them a property and you have a contract, you're getting, trying to get in a contract and you know, they take a look at it, ask some questions, whatever, they're running their criteria and they say, okay, yes, we'll lend them the property. It's a deal. It doesn't mean right. you have to go, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't mean you have to actually go with everything, right? But like now you know and doing that, then it's a deal. And so if it's a deal, it's a deal for you at the price you're sending to them, right, to run the numbers. And why would five, 10 grand more not be a deal for another investor? Right. So, I mean, those are things I would do to condition yourself to get better at knowing what ARV is and what repair costs are, what as is value is. Um, since I've been an agent and I, I pay for, you know, MLS access, which MLS is just, um, that's the database that agents have access to to look up properties that are for sale, pending, closed um you know to, to look at what they sold for all that stuff little pictures um and, and, and that access right there i mean i'm able to pull and look at things so much deeper and look at what things are actually selling for cash like i mean you can go in there and literally just just like prop stream but you know yeah. pull comps you can start to look what things are pulling for mm-hmm. um you know i mean i guess to know as is value real quick i mean i think the biggest thing is to stick to the structure style yeah with mile if you can at least for the first two comps or probably three you can go deeper if you can't find anything then but structure style um location which location 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 obviously like everybody says in real estate um and then make sure you're within a range of uh square footage in your build yeah now get too nitty-gritty but like i would yeah. 
you know, you want to compare a, a ranch to another ranch. You yes. want to compare a thousand square foot home to eight fifty nine hundred up to twelve fifty or so. You don't want to compare it to a twenty four hundred square foot home. You know, you don't want to check. You know, five miles across town, and you know, obviously, if you're in an area that's dense enough, but. Um, and then you don't want to compare something built in the fifties to 2020. Right. And you got to be careful about crossing main roads. Yes. In more dense area. I mean like Genesis yeah. County is a little bit different. We're, you know, half a million people in our County versus Oakland County, which two, is it 2 million or so? It's something like that. Yeah. Right. But to your point, yeah. Like what that like, is a big deal. I mean, you know, yeah. like you were just talking about nine mile. I mean, yeah. As little as those little nuances, but um, going north, going north of Nine Mile is better than south of Nine Mile. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. 